Hi, my name is Ben Foss, and my title is Director of Access Technology here at the Intel Digital Health Group. Today we're going to be showing you the Intel Reader. Uh, we're going to be walking through some basic usages, information that you can find in the Quick Start Guide for the most part, as well as some more advanced usages which are in the Reader Manual. The first thing you're going to want to do is take the Intel Reader out of the box, remove it from the packaging, and lay it face down. You'll then take the battery and set it on top of the other device. You'll know that you've got it right when it is slightly below the top edge of the uh, main body and then you will click it in. You get that nice solid clicking sound. There is a round button on the top surface immediately adjacent to the locking mechanism. You push that once hard and you'll hear a sound and a bright green light will go on. At that point the Intel Reader will start booting up It'll take about 45 seconds to get up to be fully functional. Once you've got the Intel Reader booted up, you want to familiarize yourself with the basics. You should start with the directional control pad on the right. The home key, which is your central key, is the one that you use to select items. You then have up, down, right, and left. An important fact to know is that inside the help menu is all of the material that's in the help guide in the manual that's available with the device. So let's enter the help menu. You should start on the word welcome. To read, you either press the play button or the select button here. Welcome. The Intel registered reader combines a high resolution camera. To pause, you press that center button again or the, the play pause button above it, the blue diagonal button. Now a couple things you can do when you're inside text on the device. You can navigate word by word, so you can go right and left one word. You can jump by sentence by using the up and down keys. Next sentence, B. Sentence, B. Or you can resume reading by pressing the center button. The can you also can change font size by using the low vision area over here on the left side of the device. So to increase font, you press the, play, the plus button. The plus button is on the right side and is outdented. The minus button is on the left side and is indented. So you can change font size that way, blowing it all the way up to 48 point font, which is full screen font. You can even spell out a word by pressing the home key here and holding it down. V -A -R -I -E -T -I. Variety. So now that we've got the basics down on how to use it, let's do some shooting and capture some content that we want to read. Uh, I'm going to open to a random page and I'm just going to thumb through it at random until we hit something that looks fun. There we go. Let's read this page. I opened up uh, on chapter 30. Now in order to do that I'm going to pick up my Intel Reader and I'm going to enter it into shoot mode. I do that by pushing the large blue button up here or by going down to the shoot menu and selecting. So I'll push it once and now we're in shoot mode. The camera turns on and immediately begins adjusting to the light in the room. First thing you want to think about is framing up the content. So in order to frame up the content, if you have an easy time seeing, you can raise it up to the point where you see the four corners of the book visible on the four corners of the screen. So you're capturing all of the text that is in this center area here. Uh, if you've got that um, captured, you can go ahead and shoot an image. Uh, I'm going to turn now to a new page and continue shooting while the other page is happening in the background. I'll go ahead and shoot now. And once it's focusing, it'll then shoot that text and we've got the, the content captured in the device. Focusing. The third page now. And you'll see the camera settle down and capture it. And you can see that the text appears on the page and starts reading immediately after I press the play button. So we started on page 256, a book by John Krakauer, and then it begins reading the first sentence of that page. 256 John Krakauer about them, after which the nervous and confused Jenga driver stop yet again, bringing the whole camera to a... Now I've got a magazine which has a complex layout on it, similar to what might be in a standard textbook or any kind of popular magazine that has layout, photograph, headlines, footnotes, and lots of information on there. And I want to show you some good ways to get good content off of this page. 
Now, option one is to capture everything on this page and the reader will actually read it in order. So you can start by reading up here, it will read down this page, then this page, then this page. But if, for example, you only wanted to capture this piece of content, you can cover up the section that you're interested in, uh, in having. I'm excluding here this grayed out sidebar. Now I just take the camera, I turn it into shoot mode, uh, and I frame up the content that I want to see. Again, making sure that the edges of the content that I'm interested in are available. Focusing. Uh, I then capture it like so, uh, and you'll hear a click and a, and a shutter. Now I have a newspaper. Again, it has complicated layout, a lot of information here, and I'm going to show you, show you some ways to get good results out of that content. We'll start by option one, which is to shoot all the content at once and let the reader read down through it. It's important to let the camera settle the first time you turn it on and get used to the lighting in the room. You'll know that because you'll be able to either see it or when you hear press shoot to capture an image, it usually has taken the time that it needs to settle. Focusing. So I just captured this entire page. So now we've captured it and it will start with the authors, Matir and Ross, and then go to a headline and then walk down through the columns. Watch as it goes, it'll actually put words back together, like management, it will turn into back one word, and then it also will turn the corner and go up to the top of the next column when it's finished. So now we're going to do reading one article at a time, as opposed to reading the entire fold of the newspaper. I'm going to take my manila folder that I have here, I'm going to lay it down over the content that I don't want, and I'm going to isolate one article on the, on the page. So I've got one article here about contract negotiations with the school. I've got my camera in shoot mode already, I'll go ahead and capture that content, framing it up on both sides, uh, it'll shoot that image. Now that I've got that front page, I can go on and capture another article, and this will fold them together into one continuous piece of reading. So I'll go ahead and shoot that content. Focusing. Now I've completed the full article, I can go ahead and play and go back to the beginning of the article and actually read along with it while I'm looking at the reader and enjoying the content. I want to show you one or two things that are important tips for getting good results when imaging any material, any text. Uh, let me show you this particular page. As you can see, there's no text on the left and there's lots of text on the right. When framing up a page like this, what I would want to do is make sure that I have some of that text in the center or the upper left corner of this material. If I frame it up like so and I have open space over here, I'm less likely to focus on the text I want, which is down here in the lower right. So in general, move this such that the text is in the upper left or at least in the center of what it is that you're trying to image. If in doubt, it's worth just picking the reader up higher in order to get a larger field of view, and that will help you if you have difficulty with visual impairments or anything else like that. So now we're going to talk about some environmental conditions for the camera. It's important with all photographs to have the right lighting. The reader has been built to adjust to room lighting and to have a strobe, and we're going to show you some ways to take advantage of that. I've set the reader down such that the camera is in complete darkness, and that means that the screen can't see anything. I'll pick it up now. You can see the screen went dark, it went light, and then it will adjust to the room conditions. There, now we've got a nice crisp image and we'd be able to shoot. When in doubt, if you have visual impairments, uh, if you give yourself a few seconds, the camera after about 15 seconds will tell you, press shoot to capture an image, and you can be very confident that the camera has adjusted if you give it a little bit of time to get up to speed. Now I'd like to show you the portable capture station. This is a peripheral that you can buy in addition to the Intel reader, and I'm going to walk you through basic usage. Let's start by opening the device. First, you take the slanted buttons at the top and pull them towards the end of the device, opening it up and allowing the two shelves to drop down gently. Then I want to capture uh, I want to open the station by taking uh, this button here. There's a full braille cell. You can feel it and pushing it up, lifting the arm in one motion until I hear it lock. I then rotate through this plane with the tray and in goes the Intel reader into the holster. When I'm connecting it now, I can now connect for power, for USB connectivity, 
and then mini USB connectivity, all three lock in. Now that you've got all of the different buttons attached, you can control it from this button down below. Uh, in the center, you'll find a blue button. It has a full braille cell on it, so you can feel it. And when you press that button, it turns on the camera. One thing, one tip for using the Intel Reader is when you set up the capture station, you want to make sure that you don't have any very bright lights immediately overhead. You can see here I've got a light in the room, but I don't have one shining directly on it. What that can do is create a lot of glare that will bounce off of this plastic. So in general, use the lighting that's on board. We have built-in polarizing filters in the strobe and in the camera, and that'll make for good results. You don't need any extra bright light around you. What I like to do is capture one chapter at a time, making it a separate file within the reader. And you can do that by going into shoot mode, capturing a chapter, exiting shoot mode, and coming back into it, and then proceeding with the next chapter of the book. So let me show you how I would do that. Lay it down. In this case, I don't want this first page, so I'm just going to lay a manila folder down over it so that the reader can't see that content. I'm also going to position the book in a fairly central place in the device so that it can, it can find it easily. Now I've got the button down here. This is the shoot button. I can press it once to enter into shoot mode, and then it will uh, focus and capture when I push the button again. Focusing. Now you can see how quickly I can get through one chapter. It moves along at a good pace. You, you're capturing two pages at once, so you're getting a lot of content in there all at one time. Now when you finish that chapter, what you want to do is exit from this particular one by hitting the, the, the back button, and then re-enter into shoot mode again. Now I would then go to the next chapter I want to capture. Voila, I'm ready to begin and I press shoot again. Focusing. In this way, the reader will keep that content in a format that I can find it easily and get back and navigate it without a lot of difficulty. So you'll see in my library, in my recent items, I'm breaking it in. It's still processing in the background. And it will tell me when it has started actually completing a page, so you'll get the start of that sentence, and then this one will convert, and then this one will convert.